Um, okay, so in the corner plane, zero, zero, we want to get to this point that is determined by this t distance. Uh, that point's going to be an x comma y. So if I'm starting at zero, zero, I need to travel to that point p by traveling that distance first, right? Okay, so that's an x distance. I then need to travel that distance, and that is y, correct? So that's why we've got x comma y here. Um, now, what circle are we in? Unit circle, and that by definition means that that distance there is one, right? If I'm looking at that right triangle, this right triangle here, and I ask you what is sine of theta, okay, not just Bear with me because your, your, your web sign uses a different uh, variable here. Theta is the same thing as what in the unit circle? T. t. So your, your web sign, the textbook uses T here, but we, we can jockey those around. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so now if they ask, well, what is sine of theta or sine of T? Sine for a right triangle is what? And so Katoa. Opposite over hypotenuse. What is opposite over hypotenuse in this case reduced to? Why? Okay. Cosine is adjacent divided by hypotenuse, which is just X, right? So what's that tell me? That tells me when I'm working on the unit circle, all these points are on the unit circle, that value right there is the sine of the T or the theta. That right there is the cosine of the t or the theta. So instead of having to grab my calculator and let my calculator evaluate things, instead of having to draw a special right triangle and deal with it that way, like we did in Chapter 5, now we can just kind of know those ordered pairs from the unit circle. My hope is that we just learn the first quadrant. Um, use reference numbers. Use uh, all students' take calculus to get the pluses and minuses correct. And we should be able to generate then all six trig functions for any one uh, of these t values. Tangent in Sokotoa is opposite over adjacent, right? So that'd be in this case y of x, correct? What was y though? What did we say y was? Sine. What did we say x was? Cosine. You guys remember in chapter 5 saying that tangent was the same as sine over cosine? And that's validation that, that that's true. Okay. Um, sine's reciprocal is cosecant. So cosecant of t is going to be 1 over y. But y cannot be 0. Um, cosine's reciprocal is secant. So that's 1 over x. x cannot be 0. And then cotangent is going to be the reciprocal tangent, so it's going to be x over y. y cannot be 0. And the tangent one, x cannot be 0. And that then, my hope is, if they give you that chart, I said you can either write it down and memorize them or whatever. My, my thought is if we know those two, learn those two. Okay. Um, then the other four come from stuff that we should already know, right? We already know what tangent is sine divided by cosine. We already know that cosecant, secant, and cotangent are reciprocals of the first three. Uh, and that hopefully um, eliminates some of the things that we have to have to memorize. And the hope is we don't really memorize the first two. We just know them. Is it okay? So what have we been what have we been working on? Why what, what is all this stuff geared towards? I I want you guys to if we take our calculator, you don't have to you don't have to get one out right now, but um if I go sign this in radians sign of two pi over three, this calculator does not put that in an exact form for me, right? Some of you might have memorized that that's radical 3 over 2, yes? Okay. We see it enough. I think you maybe make that connection. Um, but if I say like something like secant or let's go cosecant 
of 2 pi over 3. Uh, yeah, because this one doesn't know what this one doesn't know this this version of Desmos doesn't have cosecant defined for it. So I'm just gonna call that a, and then I'll just go one divided by a. So that'd be cosecant, right? I'm I'm willing to bet that people haven't memorized it, what that is, okay? Uh, as an exact value, okay? We, we haven't dealt with that one very much. Um, GeoGebra is probably one of the few calculators that will actually do this, but there's a certain command that we have to use. Uh, I don't know where my, there's TI-89 somewhere floating around here. Uh, those will give you, um, if I type in sine of 2 pi over 3 on TI-89, it will come back with um, radical 3 over 2. It will give me the, what we call the CERD or the, the, uh, the radical expression. Um, but this, for instance, if I type in sine of 2 pi over 3, can give me that number there. But the command on GeoGebra, if you want to use this, you can. That's not always going to 100% of the time work, okay? So as we get to Chapter 7, we see some, some formulas that are going to generate some nastier-looking radicals. Uh, this might not work, but if I type in CERD text, okay, CERD refers to, like, radicals, the symbols, okay? Um, and I type in, um, I'm just going to say A here, see what it does. See how it gives me a radical 3 over 2 back? Okay. Um, so, I remember A was, how I, that was sine 2 pi over 3. Okay. Um, so, third text would help maybe in that situation. But eventually, I'm going to be interested in, like, what the sine uh, 15, uh, let's see, this is pi over 12, 15 degrees, which is that number right there. So, now if I do third text, of B, it doesn't, it just sits back to the same decimal, right? Okay, but that decimal is uh, square root of 6 minus square root of 2. That's a, an exact value. And we're going to divide that by 4. And that should give me the same 0.25 number, okay? Um, that type of answer, that type of number right there, can never be generated by your calculator. Does that make sense? Therefore, when we get to that stuff, and that, that's a, it's called a half angle, when we get to that in Chapter 7, uh, we're going to have to be able to use the information we're learning right here. Okay? Just want to make sure that we don't circumvent this process um, here early on because it's going to be something that you have to rely on later. All right, so... On testing quizzes, I will give you, except for the unit circle quiz, which we're running out of days this week for. This week. This week. Friday is a day this week. Maybe I'll give it to you both days. What? It's ironic that you're a smart mouth. <laughs> Nothing. How's that ironic? <laughs> Perfect my point. On your on your test quizzes, I will give you this picture. I will give you radical three or two, one half, radical two or two, radical two or two, one half, radical three or two, zero one and one zero. I'll give you that information. Okay. And the next, so I'm not gonna give you quadrant two, three, and four. If you want quadrant two, three, and four, reflect it. Set your signs up, that kind of thing, uh, and you can use the entire thing, okay? Um, it was, was it Monday, Blaze, you came and asked me, do I use, like on the homework, can I use that chart, right? Absolutely. Right now, use that table, okay? But the hope is that we start to 
kind of morph into using this process that I'm going to demonstrate here. And this is putting together. So, so far, questions in your homework have been asking you uh, to maybe uh, give the ordered pair that goes with a T value. Okay. Uh, and then the next question was, well, find this reference number. And then the next question was, well, find the, the ordered pair that goes with this reference number. And they're trying to build skills uh, for the three or four steps that go into trying to figure out what the sine of, let's say, 2 pi over 3 is, or what the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is. So let's just right now worry about those two, and then we'll find the other four after we find that. But this is the process of what those questions are trying to build us towards. First thing is to find my t value of 2 pi over 3. So we talked about if... If my denominator in this case is a 3, I'm going to write my quadrantal angles in terms of thirds. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Um, I know I don't need to put this one down here. I don't, I don't need the 4.5 pi over 3 or the 6 pi over 3. Uh, if this 2 was bigger, I would. But um, this tells me if I got everything in thirds, then all I need to do is compare that number, that numerator, with these numerators, right? And it should tell me where t stops. Okay? t is at 2 pi over 3, so that is less than that number there, right? So it tells me I should stop in quadrant 2. 2 is bigger than a half, so I've got to pass over there, and I'm going to stop maybe right there. Okay? Um, so that's my t value of 2 pi over 3. What is T bar? What is that distance right there? How much further do I need to go to get to the x-axis? Pi over 3. Pi over 3. <clears throat> okay. So pi over 3 is T bar. So remember, T bar, what do we call that? What was the, what was the phrase for that? Or the vocabulary word for T bar? Reference number. So I'm going to reference. This number, pi over 3. Look at my chart. It's that right there. Does that make sense? That ordered pair. So what does that mean to me? That means that 2 pi over 3, the t value of 2 pi over 3, is going to have the exact same ordered pair. This ordered pair right here. Uh, let me move some things real quick. This ordered pair right there is going to be the same as the pi over 3 ordered pair. So one half, root three or two. Okay. Then we can use this phrase or the idea that we should know the signs S I G N of every coordinate in the or every point in the, the coordinate plane. Um, so where it allows me now to come back up because pi or two pi or three was in quadrant two. And everything in quadrant two, the negative or the x value is negative, right? Or I could have used all students, and students stands for sine being positive, and then I know if the sine is positive, then the cosine has to be negative. But that generates that process of knowing what t is, using reference numbers, referencing to the first quadrant, seeing what that over pair is, transferring that over pair to this point here, is now the purpose of all of that was because now when I look at sine of 2 pi over 3, what we just talked about at the beginning of class, sine is that number. Does that make sense? So sine of 2 pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. So radical 3 over 2. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is that number. So negative 1 half. So that unit circle, when we look at all those ordered pairs on the unit circle, learning this, all those coordinates built into them are the sine and the cosine of those respective measurements, those respective radians. Okay? Um, now, there's a lot of symmetry there. That's why looking at the first quadrant and using reference numbers is uh, a common practice, so I don't have to remember the whole unit circle. Um, tangent of 2 pi over 3. I've had people in the past 
just kind of memorize. So you, you've got your, your unit circle with sine and cosine all the way around with the order pairs. In the past, I've had people say, okay, well, I'm going to go to the side, and I'm going to write another number. They, they either put it in like a box here or whatever, and they put the tangent value in there. And they remember all the way around the unit circle what the tangents are for those ordered pairs. And I think that is entirely useless because isn't tangent sine divided by cosine? Does that make sense? So isn't it radical 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half, which will give me negative radical 3? And instead of memorizing the entire thing, I know that relationship and it allows me to generate that same value when I need it. Okay? Um, same idea with secant, cosecant, cotangent. Obviously, um, I wouldn't want to memorize these because there's, you know, it'll be three more for each point or for each t value. Uh, I'm going to write this way too, right? I'm going to make the argument that you guys can rationalize. I'm just going to write it as 2 over root 3. The next one would be negative 2. That goes with cosine. And then cotangent of 2 pi over 3 would be, what, negative 1 over root 3? Yeah. Is this okay? Can we do this? Let's find the six trig functions by them telling me what the t value is. Okay? So what they're going to do is, so, so this, is, this is just the kind of the shorthand way of saying, like this one here in the middle, fine sine of pi or 2. Fine cosine of pi or 2. Fine secant of pi to find all of these. So I want you guys to take them over here and work with pi or two, and you can ask each other and, and work with each other. I want you to find the six trig ratios for um, a t value of pi or two. Usually on your homework, so homework is probably going to build you, like the first maybe couple will say find all six. And then from there, they might, the next question might always say, find sine of 7 pi over 3. And the next one will say, okay, find cosine of 15 pi over 4. Okay? So there will be, not every single question is going to ask you to find all six. Okay? But if you can find one, you should be able to find all six. I think maybe the, if you remember the triangle at 90 degrees is kind of a, fake triangle, right? We had to kind of do something like this and say that was zero and that was one, right? Uh, and that's, that's really a, um, a triangle that doesn't exist. So T here is pi over 2. So what is, what is the ordered pair then that is associated right there at that distance of T? X being zero, Y being one, right? So what is that zero? That's the x value, which is the cosine, right? Okay. So the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. What's the 1 then? Sine. Okay. Um, when you do secant, secant is the reciprocal of what? Cosine. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Now, 0, you can put any number here you want. But 0... All numbers, all whole numbers, all integers can be written as a fraction, right? So if I have 0 over 1, what's the reciprocal of that? 1 over 0. And what does that mean to me? Undefined. UND. Uh, cosecant reciprocal of what? Sine. So, again, sine is 1 over 1, so reciprocal of that is just 1. Um, let's see. Mouse side. There we go. 
So reciprocal of one is one. Now tangent is sine divided by cosine, right? So one divided by zero, undefined. Cotangent then is the reciprocal of tangent, right? Which is zero over one, which is now going to be zero. For the last class, what some people will do is when they're when they're finding these, they'll go from like tangent of pi or two, they'll go straight to knowing that it's undefined, which is good, it's right, but they skip over the ratio and knowing what the ratio is that generated that undefined, and then when they see get to the cotangent, and all they have for the tangent is the undefined word, is that they think, well, because tangent is undefined, cotangent needs to be undefined. Does that make sense? Because all they have is the word. But if they have the ratio that generated that logical uh, conclusion, then when they take the reciprocal of that ratio, they do get 0 over 1, and they can conclude that that is then indeed 0. Uh, does that make sense? So, let me just kind of demonstrate here on how this is, is to eventually take place. Eventually, once you get comfortable enough with the unit circle, 4 pi over 3 is going to be right there. You autom and, and I just know that this is 3. It's just in my mind, I know that 3 pi over 3. I know this is 4.5 pi over 3. Okay? So that's, that's stuff I know. My T value would be obviously that distance, but my T bar would be... Pi over 3, does that make sense? So when I see that as my T value, I instantly see that. And that's just because I've exposed myself to this enough, right? And if you're, if you're only doing this stuff to finish the homework, um, maybe even not even do the homework, you're, you're not going to get good enough at this. Okay? It's like uh, shooting free throws. If I only shoot the free throws that I get in the game and I start shooting free throws, I'm always going to start shooting free throws, right? But if I stay afterwards... Okay, and I put up 100 free throws every practice afterwards, I'm probably going to get better at them, right? Um, so that's the idea. I, so once I see 4 pi over 3, I attach to it pi over 3. And I know pi over 3's ordered pair is? Uh, nope. One half radical 3 or 2. Okay, that is the ordered pair that goes with pi over 3. So then the ordered pair that goes with 4 pi over 3 has got to be the same except for 4 pi over 3 is in the third quadrant, where they're both negative, right? And now when they ask me for the sine value, there's my sine. When they ask me for cosine, there's my cosine. And then I can take reciprocals and divide them as well uh, to find tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent. Does that make sense? What doesn't make sense? What's confusing? What, well, what is hard? Can, can, is it, Regardless of whether it's so, so when you say things are hard, that doesn't mean you can't do them, right? It just might take more effort to do it, right? So, so what is, can you do it is the question. <laughs> um, you can, so like I said, you can, let's see here, where did I put that? Yes, 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 yes. Um, so you can do, you can have this entire thing in front of you. If I ask you what is the sign of 4 pi over 3, I go find 4 pi over 3, and I pull the y value off, and that's the sign, right? If I ask you a cosine, I pull the x value off of it, correct? Yeah. Okay. The reference number idea in that whole process is to eliminate the need to have the entire unit circle and just to have that. Does that make sense? Why are you finding the, the T bar for the record? Because if I, so let's say, what do we do? Uh, 4 pi over 3, right? So 4 pi over 3 is going to be a T value that goes from here all the way to there, right? So the T bar is that blue arc, right? The reason I'm doing that is because that blue arc, which is pi over 3 now, correct, can be transferred back to the first quadrant, to right there. You guys remember in, there's a lot of different ways you can look at this, but in geometry, you 
would these two purple angles be vertical? And then if it's a circle here, then that arc right there is congruent to that arc there. Does that make sense? So the reason I find T bar is because that's pi over 3. So, so that tells me then look at the ordered pair at pi over 3 here. Look at that ordered pair. 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Is that the same ordered pair as that, except for the plus or minus aspect? So the reference number at pi over 3 is telling me what the ordered pair of 4 pi over 3 is. But then I just got to adjust the plus or minus part. We only, use, we only find the reference if we're not looking at the same, the whole thing. Yes. Yeah, if you've got the whole thing in front of you, you don't need to do the reference stuff. But if you just got the first quadrant, reference stuff is, is appropriate. The reason I teach the reference stuff is because I don't want you to memorize this thing. I don't want you to get to a test, and you have to write on that test. You have to, you have to draw or sketch out the unit circle, and it takes you 10 minutes to take that unit circle and write that down. Does that make sense? Um, the next one I want to do is, let's say we go, I think I got one down here somewhere. Let's just go negative. So let's find this. Uh, and I don't want to find all say I think if you find sine and cosine, you, can, you guys can kind of move the other one. So let's go sine, find the sine. Uh, let's just say negative uh, 5 pi over 3. Okay. If I do that, negative 5 pi over 3, there's two ways you can do this. One, you can have the complete unit circle moving in a counterclockwise direction, right? That's how we generated this. And then you can have next to it a complete different unit circle moving in a clockwise direction with negative values, okay? I think that's kind of silly. And if you remember back to like one of the first things we did in Chapter 5 was we said if we have an angle that is negative, we can find coterminal angles with it, right? Okay, so if I take sine of negative 5 pi over 3, that should be the same thing as adding 6 pi over 3 to it. And I can add 6 pi over 3 as many times as I need to. My goal is that when I do that sum, that I get a number between 0 and 2 pi. In this case, 2 pi would be, I'm going to write it at 6 pi over 3. So now if I add that together, I get sine of just, what, pi over 3? So what that's telling me is, the sine of negative 5 pi over 3 is exactly the same as the sine of pi over 3. And my hope is, is that we remember from the unit circle that that pi over 3 right there, the x value is 1 half, the y value is root 3 over 2. So the sine of negative 5 pi over 3 is equal to that radical 3 over 2. Um, if I go, let's go, let's find cosine of... Uh, negative 10 pi over 3. So I don't like that negative 10 pi over 3, so I'm going to add to it 6 pi over 3. If I add those together, do I get a positive angle? Yes. Not yet, so I add another one. So that's going to give me cosine of 2 pi over 3 in this case, right? Okay, so the reference angle there for 2 pi over 3 would be pi over 3. So then I'm still looking at that point right there. Does that make sense? Pi over 3 is that point. And now the ordered pair for 2 pi over 3 is going to be the same ordered pair, but the x value should be in the second quadrant, right? So negative 1 half. So if you were to type in, you know, I go back to Desmos, I go cosine of negative 10 pi over 3, we see that, that we, we do get that negative 1 half. Um, same thing happens, even if the angles are, let's, let's say, cosine of like 31 pi over 4. Well, I'm going to start subtracting 31 pi over 4. I'm going to start subtracting multiples of um, 
2 pi, right? So 1, 8 pi, 4. So I'm going to subtract, what, 3 of these? And that's going to eventually give me cosine to be 7 pi or 4, right? 7 pi or 4 reference angle tells me it's in that fourth quadrant there. Pi over 4 would be my reference number. So the reference is radical 2 or 2, right? But down here, which that T value right there, that'd be 7 pi over 4. Going all the way around to there, which is the same as 31 pi over 4, right? 31 pi over 4 would just be what I just did. And then one more revolution all the way back to it, a second revolution all the way back to it, and then a third revolution all the way back to it, right? And I know it's three because I subtracted three two pi's from it. Um, but that ordered pair is going to be now radical two over two comma negative radical two over two, right? The cosine, which is which one is the cosine? The x or the y? The x. So the cosine seven pi over four. Let's do this with GeoGebra. Uh, cosine. 7 pi divided by 4. And you see that it shows up the radical 2 or 2 that we came up with. All right. uh, the purpose for this, and I showed the last class, and hopefully we have a little bit of time to do this. Um, eventually, I'm going to show you a formula. Let's think about this. If I gave you that point right there, and I look at that T value. That's halfway between 0 and 30 degrees, right? So it would be 15 degrees. From the unit circle, we don't know that, right? We don't know the 15 degree um, ordered pairs. They're there, and we can find exact ones, but this is the way we do. We, and I'll show you how this formula generates. But the sine, I'm going to say, of alpha plus beta is equal to um, sine of alpha cosine of beta plus uh, sine, or sorry, cosine of alpha sine of beta, okay? And that's a formula we're learning in Chapter 7. But now what that allows me to do, let's say I want to find, um, and I said 15, but let's go 75. So 75 would be halfway between 60 and 90, right? Okay. Um, so if I say find the sine of 75 right now, the only way we can do that is to use our calculator and get the decimal from our calculator. But isn't 75, can't I rewrite that as 30 plus 45? Does that make sense? That's my alpha. That's my beta. I'm just going to now fill into this stuff. So sine of alpha, cosine of beta, plus cosine of alpha, sine of beta, and now we want to evaluate this. And the hope is that we know our unit circle well enough. When I ask you what's the sine of 30, you're able to tell me it's 1 half. Cosine of 45, radical 2 or 2. Plus then cosine of 30, radical 3 or 2. Sine of, uh, I guess that should have been 45, right? Radical 2 or 2. Multiply that stuff out, I get radical 2 or 4 plus radical 6 over 4. Go to a calculator real quick. If I type in radical 6 plus radical 2, and I divide that by 4, I get that number right there, right? Is that the same thing as the sine of 75 degrees? Okay, and that, that'll be the plan... And why we're doing this unit circle stuff now is because it has to be used then.